Judges 7. Gideon surprises and routs the Midianites. Then Jerubal, that is, Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Herod, and the camp of Midian was north of them, by the hill of Moret, in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has delivered me. Now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home. And Gideon tested them, twenty-two thousand returned, and ten thousand remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many, take them down to the water and I will test them for you there, and he of whom I say to you, This man shall go with you, shall go with you, and any of whom I say to you, This man shall not go with you, shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Every one that laps the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set by himself, likewise every one that kneels down to drink. And the number of those that lapped, putting their hands to their mouths, was three hundred men, but all the rest of the people knelt down to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped I will deliver you, and give the Midianites into your hand, and let all the others go every man to his home. So he took the jars of the people from their hands, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel every man to his tent, but retained the three hundred men, and the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That same night the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you fear to go down, go down to the camp with Parah your servant, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Parah his servant to the outposts of the armed men that were in the camp. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the people of the east lay along the valley like locusts for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand which is upon the seashore for multitude. When Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade, and he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent, and struck it so that it fell, and turned it upside down, so that the tent lay flat. And his comrade answered, This is no other than the sword of Gideon the son of Joash, a man of Israel, into his hand God has given Midian and all the host. When Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped, and he returned to the camp of Israel, and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hand. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars, with torches inside the jars. And he said to them, Look at me, and do likewise, when I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, when they had just set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars, holding in their left hands the torches, and in their right hands the trumpets to blow, and they cried, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the army ran, they cried out and fled. When they blew the three hundred trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled as far as Beth Shittah toward Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Meholah, by Tabath. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh, and they pursued after Midian. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters against them, as far as beth Bera, and also the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they seized the waters as far as beth Bera, and also the Jordan. And they took the two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb, they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb, as they pursued Midian, and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon beyond the Jordan. Judges 8 Gideon's Triumph and Vengeance and the men of Ephraim said to him, 
what is this that you have done to us, not to call us when you went to fight with Midian? And they upbraided him violently. And he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiazer? God has given into your hands the princes of Midian, Orab, and Zeb, what have I been able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger against him was abetted, when he had said this. And Gideon came to the Jordan and passed over, he and the three hundred men who were with him, faint yet pursuing. So he said to the men of Sukkot, Pray, give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. And the officials of Sukkot said, Are Zeba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? And Gideon said, Well then, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, I will flail your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. And from there he went up to Penel, and spoke to them in the same way, and the men of Penel answered him as the men of Sukkot had answered. And he said to the men of Penel, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkar with their army, about fifteen thousand men, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east, for there had fallen a hundred and twenty thousand men who drew the sword. And Gideon went up by the caravan route east of Noba and Jogbiha, and attacked the army, for the army was off its guard. And Zeba and Zalmunna fled, and he pursued them and took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and he threw all the army into a panic. Then Gideon the son of Joash returned from the battle by the ascent of Hares. And he caught a young man of Sukkot, and questioned him, and he wrote down for him the officials and elders of Sukkot, seventy-seven men. And he came to the men of Sukkot, and said, Behold Zeba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are Zeba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are faint? And he took the elders of the city and he took thorns of the wilderness and briars and with them taught the men of Sukkot. And he broke down the tower of Penel, and slew the men of the city. Then he said to Zeba and Zalmunna, Where are the men whom you slew at Tabor? They answered, As you are, so were they, every one of them, they resembled the sons of a king. And he said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother, as the Lord lives, if you had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said to Jether his firstborn, Rise, and slay them. But the youth did not draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was still a youth. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said, Rise yourself, and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zalmunna, and he took the crescents that were on the necks of their camels. Gideon's Idolatry Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, and your son and your grandson also for you have delivered us out of the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you, the Lord will rule over you. And Gideon said to them, Let me make a request of you, give me every man of you the earrings of his spoil. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, and every man cast in it the earrings of his spoil. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was one thousand seven hundred shekels of gold, besides the crescents and the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, and besides the collars that were about the necks of their camels. And Gideon made an ephod of it and put it in his city, in Ophrah, and all Israel played the harlot after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his family. So Midian was subdued before the people of Israel, and they lifted up their heads no more. And the land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Death of Gideon Jerubal the son of Joash went and dwelt in his own house. Now Gideon had seventy sons, his own offspring, for he had many wives. And his concubine who was in Shechem also bore him a son, and he called his name Abimelech. And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of Joash his father, at Ophrah of the Abbey's rites. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and played the harlot after the Baals, and made Baal Baalbirath their god. 
And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had rescued them from the hand of all their enemies on every side, and they did not show kindness to the family of Jerubal, that is, Gideon, in return for all the good that he had done to Israel.